Welcome back, Shalligators. Today, we are breaking down Rebel Wilson's new romance with Jacob Bush. Now, there was a lot to say about this. I put it on my Instagram and I asked you guys, like, what's the topic here? I mean, is it their age difference? Because she's 40. I know, right? She's 40. Can you believe that? And he's 29. Some people say he's 31. 30. Let's split the difference that he's about 30. So there's a big age difference. She's older. Is it that Rebel has slimmed down? Is it that maybe he's clout chasing her? Is it that he's got kind of a weird history with women? So you guys basically came to the conclusion of talk about how to glow up in terms of dating when you've glowed up the rest of yourself. Once you've transformed yourself, how do you transform the guys that you date? How do you change your taste? How do you break those patterns? That's my dog whining at the door if you can hear him. Such a poor little urchin. And how do you level up in dating after you've leveled up with yourself. We're gonna break it all down and I'm gonna share my thoughts on their age difference. I share my thoughts on everything. But before we do, just remind you guys to follow me on Instagram at ShallonXO. Like I said, you guys weighed in and then we vote. It was great. Actually, we didn't vote on this. Some, we don't always vote, but usually we do. Also, be sure to follow me on Cameo if you would like a video shout out, get a question answered, a pep talk for a friend, a birthday wish, an apology, death threat. No, not a death threat, but maybe a subtle, intimidation. I can do that. That's fine. Evil week's coming. And speaking of evil week, be sure to follow me on Infstream. It's our uncensored ad-free platform. We're going to be doing some of in, excuse me, some of evil week over there. But in the meantime, we've got some more story times up. I just put up a video right now about how I met my boyfriend and some potential red flags. I'll, you know, I get into it. So let's get in to Rebel. So the thing that caught my eye about this couple is they recently made their red carpet debut in Monaco of all places. I fucking love Monaco. I love Monaco. It's killing me that I'm not there right now. Ha! Ah! I think she was there with like Kathy Lee Gifford. No, maybe it was Kate Beckinsale. It doesn't matter. They're both lights in my life. And this picture of these two kind of struck me because I'm like, what's going on? When I think of two people in love with have, who have tons of chemistry, this is not the photograph that comes to mind. First of all, the fact that their hands are intertwined like that, what in the fuck in 1994 prom pose are we looking at? Why are they such different colors? They're like a Benetton ad. They're both white people. He looks like he would maybe go to the tanning salon. Like maybe he has one in his house. And let's talk about where he might potentially live. We'll get back to this photo. Jacob Bush... Because this was a big question, like, oh, he's just after her for her fame or her money. Her her money? Her money. Do you know how much he's worth? He individually is worth $100 million. His family of the Anheuser-Busch family who made Budweiser, you know, that, that beverage, they are the 16th richest family in America. They're worth $13 billion. Rebel is like some street urchin compared to him. He ain't in it for the money. And I think it's interesting that people were saying that because the implication is, well, there's no reason he could actually like her because she's fat, right? And Rebel has been on what she has called the year of health. She's lost almost 40 pounds, I think. She's posting pictures of like hiking and stuff like that. She looks great. She clearly feels great. She's leveled up, but we're gonna, we're gonna get it. I gotta get back to this picture. I gotta get back to this picture. So yeah, he looks like he's got like a tanning salon in his in his mansion. What strikes me is, and she has been doing this forever, she looks so uncomfortable in every photo she takes, every red carpet photo. This She's not like smiling or even like, it's, you know how like when you ask a little kid to smile and they're like, they just think it means show all their teeth. And I'm like, what sort of? Uh, she just looks kind of cr like she's cringing uh, and creeped out. He's like clearly studied his face in the mirror. He knows his angles like teeth everywhere. I turn teeth. But even in her individual pic, she's like, uh, uh, she just looks so awkward. And some of you guys were like, maybe she's just uncomfortable in front of the camera. Do you know what she does for a living? I, what is it? Is she an accountant? Oh no. She's an actress. If you don't know how to take a static still photo after being in like however many movies, I don't know what to tell you. I 
I don't know what to tell you, girl. Stay home with a selfie stick and just practice a little bit, okay? We all have to. So this awkward picture notwithstanding, it, it did kind of beg the question like, okay, what's what's going on with this couple? Get down. And they do have a pretty significant age difference. Like I said, she's 40. Again, wild. She does not look 40 at all. She looks like, I don't know, 28 or something like that. She's got great skin. And he's about 10 or 11 years younger. And some of you guys are like, um, really, Shallon? You're coming for her and the age difference? Don't you date younger guys? Like, don't you date guys his age? Excuse you. That is so out of line. I would literally never date someone that old. Never. I tried. When I first moved to Montana, I tried. I dated a 39-year-old. He ended up ghosting. I dated a 32-year-old. He was, he wore Hanes boxer briefs under board shorts. I can't. I dated a 32 or 33 year old. I had to have, I tried to have one emotional conversation with him and he absolutely shut the bed. Like he just, he totally collapsed and devolved. So yeah, I tried that little experiment. Gross. My boyfriend's 23 and he is twice the man that any of those dudes were put together. So I don't Ever. I've never seen a correlation between age and maturity. Not really. Like, I've seen a correlation between awkwardness and age. Like, a guy who's younger, they might say things that come out a little, like, stuttery or awkwardy or not quite slick. But I like that because that's how I know someone's telling the truth. Beware of the slick man. Beware of baby girl, let me tell you how much you mean to me and this and that. And you know what I can do? I can build you a table and I can fix your car and we're going to go riding. And we're... It's like, if you are just way too good at this, there's a reason. Either you've done it so many times and run this game so many times, or you don't care at all about me. So you're not nervous. I like a man who's a little bit nervous and you know, also younger is hotter. So I think Rebel is totally on the right track. And sources say that they have like a really great personality match and they both have the same sense of humor. And they were set up by mutual friends in LA and their first date was at Catch in Santa Monica. So that's cool. I mean, Catch is good. It's a sushi restaurant. It's very like sceney. And it's just funny that like that's, if I was interested in getting to know an actress like on a real deep personal level, I wouldn't take her where ostensibly she's going to meet fans and they're going to come up. You know what I mean? And it's like maybe he did that because he liked that shine. He has priorly dated a real housewife of Beverly Hills, Adrienne Maloof. And they had a 28 year age difference. She's a lot older. She's a little spitfire, and she said that they bonded because their grandfathers were both in the liquor industry. She's the heir, of course, of the Maloof Hotelier fortune, the Palms in Vegas, all of that. And so they're both heirs. And so they can understand that life level in a way that I'm sure random people they might meet on Tinder or Raya don't. But that's a pretty significant age difference. And she said at the time, she's like, you know what? Like, I didn't even think about it. When you meet someone, their age isn't stamped on their forehead. If you don't have your Botox, yes, it is, sweetheart. Keep that in mind. So he has had experience with high profile women. It's an interesting history. I don't know what it means, but I feel like it means something. I don't know. What do you think of me? I don't know. So let's get to what you guys really thought was going on in this. Glowing up, right? You guys said, you know, she looks so good. She's feeling good. She's like coming into her own. Great that she's leveled up in terms of a dude, because you know who she priorly dated? Mickey Gooch. Who is that, you ask? I don't know. I didn't even bother to Google him. I don't need to, based on his name. Mickey Gooch? I realize people don't name themselves, right? Our other people name us. But what kind of gene pool did you come from that Mickey Gooch? Imagine looking at a baby, having a baby in your tummy for nine months and then cradling it and then being like, Mickey Gooch. I had a friend, she named her baby daughter, like last year, Lois. Mickey, I had always heard was like very much a climber and a user and gross. And he, I think he also dated like Kelly Osbourne, who I've interviewed. She's literally one of the top three rudest people I've ever interviewed ever. I think number one was Lily Allen. That bitch can suck a bag of dicks. She was so rude and so full of herself. So is Kelly. Awful people. I mean, maybe they're fine people, but they were awful to interact with. Anyway, 
What do we do to be like Rebel? To glow up and level up. Because I know a lot of you guys have been on your own self-discovery journey. Maybe quarantine tipped it off. Maybe that's just where you are. Maybe you've lost weight. Maybe you've gotten your degree. Maybe you've learned to drive. Maybe you've finally let go of a toxic past. Something, if you're watching this video, has leveled up in your life, right? And now you're like, I'm ready to date a better and different caliber of guys. Here's the good news and the bad news. You never needed to change yourself, girl. You didn't. Let's for a minute pretend that your transformation is physical, okay? For the purposes of this video, let's pretend that our transformation purposes are physical. You were always that hot chick. What do I say? What do I say about being a hot girl? The secret to being a hot girl is simply deciding that you are one. Simply deciding that you are one. Do you know who my boyfriend's celebrity crush is? You're going to fucking die. Do you know who it is? I'm used to hearing Kate Beckinsale, J-Lo. I mean, she's mine. I mean, also because like I date younger guys, so they usually like older chicks. You know who's is this? Aubrey Plaza. I'm like, that can't be right. She looks like any girl you could find at the mall. Because I'm going to like just on looks. He's like, no, the way she carries herself is so bitchy and so hot and so cool and weird. Like, yeah, dream girl. And I'm like, really? So you put Aubrey Plaza in a room with Jennifer Lopez. You're going to go for Aubrey. He's like 100%. And he's not wrong. The way she carries herself, that attitude, that April Ludgate attitude, it's the Kourtney Kardashian attitude, right? It's the, what are you doing for me? You, I'm blocking the view. I am the view. What do you bring to the table? Because I am the table. It's this attitude of the world exists to serve me. Because I've been thinking a lot about glowing up lately. You know, I've kind of stopped drinking. I'm back on keto and I'm like in the throes of the keto flu. If you've done it, you know what I mean. It's like the first few days when you're burning off all the carbs and all the sugar in your bodies and you just feel really sluggish. But after that, you feel so good. I mean, I, I like keto. Not everybody does. It's totally fine. If you don't like it, don't do it. But I'm really trying to glow up and transform myself and to be the person that I know I can be. I'm also doing some workouts. I just ordered the mirror, you know, that workout system. I'll tell you guys how it is. And I'm doing Zoom Pilates uh, with Nora, my Pilates guru. She's great. Wellness by Nora. Follow her on Instagram. I'll put her handle down in the description. She does awesome, like, Zoom stuff. And she's really good for rehabbing injuries or just like getting your body to the point where it's moving and aligned right. It's awesome. My point is being hot is a state of mind. What did Amy Schumer famously say? We, we quote her this particular quote quite often on here. She said it was like in a glamour award, like woman of the year acceptance piece. She's like, I'm 168 pounds and I can catch a dick whenever I want. And I was like, Yes, you can. Yes, we all can. We can all catch a dick at 168, 268, 110, whatever it might be. I've been thin and I've been what I consider for me fat. And I would never look at somebody else who weighed what I was weighing at that time, at this time, and be like, that's a fat person. But for me, it's like, you know, we all have our own happy place. And it's different for everyone and it should be. And, and there shouldn't be like one perfect weight, like whatever. As long as you feel good, who cares? The point is, the only difference in my dating life, because in my messed up mind, like, that's why I needed to look good, to catch better guys, because at the time, like, my life revolved around approval from dating, you know? It's, I was young, and that's how, unfortunately, things were going, and I learned a lot from being in that place. The only difference was my attitude, and I remember my therapist saying to me, what if you just had that attitude without losing the weight. And I was like, <laughs> what do you mean? What is, it? it was such a foreign concept to me. I, I couldn't even understand it in my little pea brain. And she's like, what if instead of pumping yourself full of Adderall and diet pills and coffee and starving yourself or maybe throwing your food up, what if you just acted as if you were that perfect weight. 
And I was like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard, first of all, because I'm not that weight. I'm fat and I can't wear the clothes I want to wear. And she's like, okay, wait, wait, let's break this down. What, when you picture that perfect outfit, you know, whatever, maybe it's a bikini and you're on vacation. What about that? And what about that size is appealing? And I was like, okay, I went to like my mind palace and I'm like, I'm walking around the pool, I'm down at the beach and I'm just strutting it and I'm feeling good. And I'm, I'm, I've got like a, a step in, a pep in my step and I'm like talking to guys and I'm feeling good. And she's like, why do you think only your weight can unlock that set of behaviors? You are the one putting that door in front of that path. You, you alone have decided that, that that is the arbiter of your behavior is your weight. No one else has decided that for you but you. I was like, oh, and that my whole life really did change. My life changed. When I get into those crisis feelings of like, I don't feel good and I need to weigh 120 and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, why? Because I want to act a certain way? What if I just acted that way? What if I just acted that way? What if I just acted as if I was rich? Yeah, but I wasn't always rich. And once I adopted a mindset of wealth, which I'm going to do, I am going to do a video on Instream about the mindset of wealth. And we talked a little bit about it on here, but we're going to go in deeper and I'm going to tell you my whole history with money because it's very up and down. But so my point in saying all this is that if you are in the middle of your glow up, or if you're not, if you wish that you had had a glow up, please realize that so much of that is happening in your head. But sometimes it's not. Sometimes you look back and you're like, no, I didn't have two eyebrows, but I did have a mustache. That's, that was, that was real. I had yellow teeth. They were like Indian corn. And you really have transformed and you're like, all right, I'm feeling good, bitch. How are we going to change everything else? Because Dating is kind of like anything else. It becomes habit. Who you date, who you're attracted to. And it's not just habit. It's like if you have dated dumb athletes who cheat, right? You become just kind of drawn towards that familiar familiarity. Like you've created your own mythology and you find yourself pulled in that direction. Like you were trying to like save money or something like that or lose weight. This all dovetails to the same place, Starbucks. When I've tried to do both of those things, I realize I have to stop my daily latte habit. And I'm like, well, no, no, but like I get a latte every morning. Like I just, I get a latte. That's what I do. And it's like, okay, well, if you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to keep getting what you're getting. And so we become, we get in these like sort of rolls, these tracks, this little hamster wheel. And we're like, wait a minute, is this serving me? So if you're realizing that no, it's not serving you, I want you to really do those autopsies. And we talk about, cowboy, please get down. I love you. So do those emotional autopsies on your own relationships. And I don't just mean romantic ones, toxic friendships, maybe chronically getting fired from jobs. All of these things are intertwined and they're intertwined with our confidence and not just our confidence, but our sense of what we deserve from this world. You, you know, don't we all know some that one friend, that girl in our school, that bitch in our office who just sucks? She's dumb or she's snotty, but she's getting promoted. She's a star of the school play. That dude's asking her out. They just seem to like fail upwards. And you're like, what the fuck? And it's so easy to get fixated on these people about how unfair their life seems to be, like in a good way, though. They have an attitude that counteracts evidence. They have an attitude that counteracts evidence. They think they deserve amazing, magical, wonderful things. Of course I deserve that promotion. Of course I deserve to be student council president. Of course I deserve him for that guy to ask me out. What's your evidence to that? I don't know. I just believe it. The audacity. The audacity of hope, as Barack Obama says, right? And when I look back on everything I've achieved, and I, I think of achievements in terms of like career stuff, not romantic. I'll tell you why in a minute. It's because I had that audacity too. Of course I'm going to write a book. Of course I'll have a TV show. Of course I'll be a YouTuber. <laughs> like it's hard. I just had this audacity of belief in myself. And all of those things came to fruition. I have very rarely 
failed. Very rarely failed at something I tried to do. Almost never. But I failed almost constantly in love. Why? Because my attitude was 100% different. Oh, I'm not going to have a good relationship. He's not going to like me. Ugh. He's not going to stay faithful to me. Well, bitch, what you fear you create. And what you hope for you create, right? You create whatever your dominant thoughts are moving towards. And in business and in stuff like that, they were of success. In love, they were of complete failure. And guess the fuck what? Your wish is my command, said the universe. That's exactly how it manifested. So your glow up, you might think it has to do with getting two eyebrows or taking away that mustache. It doesn't. It has to do with where your thoughts are pulling you, where they're pulling your behavior. This isn't magic. It's your thoughts. Your life is created first in your mind and then it's created in your behaviors. And then you're like, well, here it is. Fuck. Or here it is. Yay. And you and you alone are in charge of that. Rebel clearly shifted her thinking, clearly shifted away from like, I'm supposed to date guys and I'm Mickey Gooch to I'm supposed to date Anheuser Bushes who are worth a hundred million dollars and who think I'm beautiful. Fuck yeah, you are, girl. Absolutely right. That's exactly what you should be doing. I'm going to bring Cowboy up here just because he's making me crazy. Come here, fancy face. Oh, you're getting so big. Look how big this animal is. Can you handle it? Oh, I know. Let's talk about creating good things. I know. Floppy and boneless. You're like a boneless chicken tender. Boneless hound meat. Right. Now he's pouting. What do you want from me? I love you so much. So my point is, the too long didn't read is, your thoughts are the glow up. Not your body. I mean, sure. You can always learn to be hotter. You can learn how to do your hair. You can learn how to do your makeup. You can watch YouTube videos about it. It doesn't matter. If your mind isn't in the right place, None of it matters. I have a lot of Victoria's Secret models actually who follow me and they DM me. And I was like, why would you follow me? There's no, no chance you have problems with boys, right? No, they have the exact same problems that non-models have. It's just about attitude and it's about confidence and it's about what you think you deserve. And when their mindset changes, the outcome changes. So start there, act as if you want to be a hot girl, decide that you are one. This snout machine knows that he is a delight and he just acts as if he is. He acts as if it's okay to bite me. The woman who pays for everything. I pay for everything. I literally pay for everything. And you never once say thank you. You never once say thank you. So I want to know your glow up stories. When you lost weight, got your mustache waxed, graduated from med school, whatever it was. Ow, stop that. Baby, did you change <laughs> your dating life too? Was that harder? Did you find yourself at first dating still the same Mickey Gooches <laughs> before you found the Jacob Bushes? And how did that shift occur? Or are you still trying to find that? Are you doing the worst possible thing, which is saying, well, once I lose this weight, then I'll feel confident enough to date a good guy. No, girl, it's the other way around. If you're deciding in your mind, <laughs> what is this animal? What is this hounder mouth? If you've decided in your mind that you deserve good things, you're gonna feel good about yourself and your body is gonna follow. Your education's gonna follow. Your living situation's gonna follow. So start in the mind, end at the eyebrows, <laughs> and let me know. Also, tell me what you guys think about Jacob and Rebel. Oh, oh, I love you. Do you think they're built to last? Or is he maybe a clout-chasing douche? I'll see you later, shalligators. Ah!